Oh my Lord, Shri Krishna, son of Vasudeva. Oh, all pervading personality of Godhead. I offer my respectful obeisances unto you. I meditate upon Lord Shri Krishna because he is the absolute truth. And the primeval cause of all causes of the creation, sustenance, and destruction of the manifested universes. He is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations. And he is independent because there is no other cause beyond him. It is he only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge unto the heart of Brahmaji. The original living being. By him, even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion. As one is bewildered by the illusory representations of water seen in fire or land seen in water. Only because of him do the material universes temporarily manifested by the reactions of the three modes of nature appear factual although they are unreal. I therefore meditate upon him, Lord Sri Krishna, who is eternally existent in the transcendental abode, which is forever free from the illusory representations in the material world. I meditate upon him, for he is the absolute truth. Dharma Projita Kaitrovo Tra. Paramo nirmatsaranam satam. Vedyam vastavam atra vastu. Sivadam tapa trayon mulanam. Shimad bhagavate mahamuni krite. Kimba parer ishwaraha. Sadyo hidi avarudyate tra. Krite bihi sususu bistakshanat. Completely rejecting all religious activities which are materially motivated. This Bhagavata Purana <coughs> propounds the highest truth, which is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure in heart. The highest truth is reality distinguished from illusion for the welfare of all. Such truth uproots the threefold miseries. This beautiful Bhagavatam compiled by the great sage Vyasadeva in his maturity is sufficient in itself for God realization. What is the need of any other scripture? As soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of Bhagavatam by this culture of knowledge, the Supreme Lord is established within his heart. Nigama kalpatura galitam falam. Sukumakad amrita drive yasam, samyatam. Pibata bhagavatam rasam alayam. Muhur ahoratska bhuvibhavu kaha. O expert and thoughtful men, relish shimad bhagavatam. The the true fruit of the desire tree of Vedic literatures. It emanated from the lips of Sisugadev Goswami. Therefore, this fruit has become even more tasteful, although its nectarian juice was already relishable for all, including liberated souls. Shinvatam Svakata Krishna. Punya Shravana Kirtana, Hedyan Taksto Badrani, Vidu Nati Srihit Satam. To hear about Krishna from Vedic literatures, 
or to hear from him directly through the Bhagavad Gita is itself righteous activity. And for one who hears about Krishna, Lord Krishna is dwelling within everyone's heart, acts as a best wishing friend, and purifies the devotee who constantly engages in hearing of him. Nasta preesu bhadresu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Samasloke Bhakti Bhavati Naistiki. In this way, a devotee naturally develops his dormant transcendental knowledge as he hears more about Krishna from the Bhagavatam and from the devotees. He becomes fixed in the devotional service <coughs> of the Lord. Tadarajas tamo bhavo kama loba dayas chaye chete tayre navidam stitvam sattve prasiddhiti By development of devotional service one becomes freed from the modes of passion and ignorance. And thus material lust and avarice are diminished. Evam prasana manaso bhagavat bhakti yogataha bhagavat tattva vijnana mukta sangasya jayate when these impurities are wiped away, the candidate remains steady in his position of pure goodness, becomes enlivened by devotional service, and understands the science of God perfectly. Siddhyante Sarvasamsaya Siyante chasikarmani Drista Evat Maniswade Thus Bhakti Yoga severs the hard knot of material affection and enables one to come to the stage of a samsayam samagram understanding of the supreme absolute truth personality of Godhead. Absolute Truth, Personality of Godhead, Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, Chapter 14, Verse Number 11. Urvakshi Bahavo Mayam Spurant Yanga Punak Puna Vipatus Cha Pihirdaye Aradasyanti vipriyam. Translation by Srila Prabhupada. The left side of my body, my thighs, arms, and eyes are all quivering again and again. I am having heart palpitations due to fear. All this indicates undesirable happenings. Purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. Material existence is full of undesirables. Things we do not want are forced upon us by some superior energy. And we do not see that these undesirables are under the grip of the three modes of material nature. When a man's eyes, arms, thighs all quiver constantly, one must know that something is going to happen which is undesirable. These undesirables are compared to fire in a forest. No one goes into the forest to set fires, but fires automatically take place in the forest, creating inconceivable calamities for the living beings of the forest. Such a fire cannot be extinguished by any human efforts. 
The fire can be extinguished only by the mercy of the Lord, who sends clouds to pour water on the forest. Similarly, undesirable happenings <coughs> in life cannot be checked by any number of plans. Such miseries can be removed only by the mercy of the Lord, who sends his bona fide representatives to enlighten human beings and thus save them from all calamities. Srila Prabhupada, Patita Pavan, So the science of reading different states of the body to understand what is going to happen is explained in the Vedas. This is one part of the, Ve uh, the Vedic literature, this verse, that explains how bodily conditions can give you an understanding of what's going to happen in the future or what is happening now. Uh, just like oftentimes seismologists, those are people who study volcanic uh, behavior, do not predict correctly when a volcano is going to happen. They can only uh, only understand it's happening when it's happening. Uh, but they can't predict it. They say, well, maybe this, maybe it'll happen now, maybe it'll happen later. They can talk about a fault line and things like that. But animals understand and react right before an earthquake takes place. How is it possible that the animals can do that and human beings, even though they have so much science. By the way, seismology is an imperfect science. It's not, it's not, really, it's not really perfect. Uh, so how is it that uh, animals can do that? Well, because they can understand things through their body. And it's unclear here that human beings also can understand things through their body if they've been trained to do it. So Maharaj Yudhisthira was trained, and he could understand that when the left side of his body, his thighs, his arms, and his eyes were quivering again and again, that was an indication of something very inauspicious that was happening at that time. And also heart palpitations due to fear. All this indicates undesirable happenings. So... Unfortunately, the material world is full of undesirable happenings. And it's happening all the time. People that you love die. Uh, there's political upheavals. There's weather, unfavorable weather conditions. There's uh, economic downturns. There's pandemics or epidemics. There are, there's war. There is uh, natural catastrophes, earthquakes, flooding, and so forth. It's happening all the time in every part of the world. Therefore, the sense gratification of people is being interrupted continually by some kind of tragedy or uh, some kind of upheaval. So, uh, what we don't understand is uh, how it's happening or why it's happening. But Bhagavatam explains it. It's happening because of sinful activity. Of course, people have been trained not to believe there's such thing as sins. They think, oh, that's religious dogma. Uh, there's no sin. And unless you're a, you're a religious person, you believe in sin. But there's no sin. It's whatever you want to do, you can do. Man, man is independent. He, there's no God. And when you die, there's no afterlife. This is the way they rationalize a life of sin, by these false statements. But yet, they don't like to get old. They don't like to get sick. They don't like to, get to die. They don't like to have natural catastrophes. But no matter how great their science is, no matter how great their uh, technology is, still these things happen. All the people that have promised, oh, we're going to solve the problem of death very soon. 
but they always die before they solve the problem. <laughs> but they're promising it for other people, but they can't even save themselves. So we see the whole thing is lying. They're lying to people, giving them false hopes, and lying to themselves. And then they say, well, it doesn't really matter because when you die, it's all over. There's nothing after death. There's no judgment. It's all that is religious nonsense. No, it's not religious nonsense. If suffering is not religious nonsense and you can't do anything about it, then why do you say that uh, there's nothing after death? You can't even control death. Therefore, you're not a scientist. The ultimate goal of science is to control death, to eliminate it. And... And they've never been able to do that. Although all the scientific research that started somewhat in, you know, in a very intense way in the Middle Ages was to find a solution to death. See, that alch alchemical uh, research using poisons to heal diseases. And it, it all started with the attempt to uh, find a, uh, an elixir of immortality. Say. Somehow or other, people knew that there is such thing as an elixir of immortality. And, they, and, and people in the Middle Ages went to great lengths to find it. Ponce de Leon, he went all the way from Saint Spain to uh, the coast of the uh, present United States and the Caribbean looking for this fabled elixir of immortality. And in history, there's also the search for El Dorado, this ideal place where there's no birth and death, and so forth. It's, it's, it's been going on throughout history. And the real goal of modern science today is to solve what they call the riddle of death. And they keep promising it, although they die before they they fulfill their promise. So there's no way of getting out of the grip of the three modes of material nature through science or speculation or, or any type of uh, false claims and whatever. Uh, therefore, Krishna says, Daivhi e sagunamai, mama maya duratyaya. He said, this material energy of mine, which is divine, is impossible to overcome. You can try, but you'll never overcome it through science or through whatever means. But someone who surrenders unto me, they can easily overcome this gunamai, this material nature, uh, with the three modes of material nature that condition people to suffer. It, it, it's a conditioning. It's just like, uh, let's say, there's a mean person, and everything they do is to cause suffering to others. So the modes of material nature are like that, and they're under the control of Krishna through his agent, Miss Maya, or Durga Devi. Therefore, in this verse, Daivi es Gunamaya, Mama Maya, Durat Maya. Whenever you see the, the prefix dur, that means something very inauspicious, like Durga or Duratma. So uh, you can uh, understand when things are going to go wrong by reading your body's, uh, let's say, state, such as this quivering on the left left hand side of the body. <clears throat> now, nobody wants these things to happen. They're undesirable, but they happen automatically. Just like sometimes you're successful and sometimes you're a failure. Just like you try and plan for success, but failure comes anyway. You didn't plan for the failure, but it comes. And sometimes you don't expect success, but success comes. So these things are based on a person's karma. It's, and that karma is predetermined by what you did in the previous lives. Sometimes the kar karmic reaction doesn't take place in the next life. It can be uh, 
it can be pushed forward to two or three lives in the future. Therefore, it's almost impossible for people to figure out what's going to happen uh, because things, things, reactions can come from previous lives, not, not just the, the, the last life, but other lives before that. And, and therefore, there's no way you can see what's called cause and effect except by the actual fact itself. That is, let's say you do everything to be healthy and you still get sick. So that means that uh, you're not actually in control. Let's say you do everything healthy, healthy to, I mean, everything, uh, let's say, do all the studies you can on the stock market to find a stock that you, you think is undervalued and has a great growth potential. And then you invest in it, and that stock tanks. Although you did all the studies. Say. So this is what's happening in life. It's called Vipari, Vipari uh, yeah, it's, it's, in other words, the opposite of what you expect happens. Uh, it's in Bhagavad Gita, I think this first or second chapter. Uh, riparitani. Uh, Arjuna s uses that word to say, you know, everything I expected has come out opposite. You know, and often that happens in life. Just like two people get married and they said, oh, I love you and, uh, and I love you, I love you and we're going to live forever and we may make a promise, we'll stay together. And then, you know, a few years later they're divorced. See? So, <laughs> What happened to the I love yous? What happened to that promise, uh, till death do us part? No, till divorce do us part, right? So uh, this is, this is Viparitani. It's, it's your expectation, just the opposite of your expectation happened. And this is going on all the time in our lives. So how uh, can we do something about it? Prabhupada, similarly, undesirable happenings in life cannot be checked by any number of plans. You know, you can say, well, I have a strategy, just like uh, the famous French philosopher Descartes. He came up with perfect rationality by which you can always avoid mistakes. How did he die? He made a mistake. <laughs> Although he had... He had a perfect, rational process to avoid all mistakes, right? He made a mistake. He received an invitation by the Queen of Denmark or something like that to spend some time with her, and, and that means that, you know, he'll be getting money from her, he'll be getting her patronage. So he left France and went to Denmark. Now, Denmark is a Scandinavian country. In the summertime, it's nice, but in wintertime, it gets really cold, right? So he died. Caught a cold, and the winter in the big, you know, those big medieval palaces, you know, they're they're made out of stone. They're big. And it's hard to keep them warm in the winter time, right? So he died. He made a mistake. Although he had formulated a process of rationality by which you never make a mistake. You see, you see how it's, again, viparitani. So nobody can overcome the laws of material nature by any plan or any philosophy or any rationality that they can come up with. That's what Prabhupada's saying. Similarly, undesirable happenings in life cannot be checked by any number of plans. However, he says, such miseries can be removed only by the mercy of the Lord who sends his bona fide representatives to enlighten human beings and thus save them from all cal calamities. So that's the solution. If you're fortunate enough to meet a bona fide representative, how does someone become a bona fide representative? They don't change anything Krishna has said. That's why Prabhupada translated Bhagavad Gita Yata Rup, as it is, not as I would like it to be, or as I wish it would be, or how I want it to be. No, as it is. So. When you read Prabhupada's Bhagavad Gita, you come to the same conclusion as Arjuna did 5,000 years ago when he heard Bhagavad Gita from Prabhupada, from uh, Krishna. What is that solution? 
what is that conclusion? Sarva Dharma and Pritya Mami comes Sadanam Raja. Ham Tvam Sarva Pati. Yomaksi Shami Masucha. One should surrender to Krishna. Give up all these fabricated dharmas, so called occupational duties. Oh, my duty is to drive a taxi and earn enough money to put food on the table. That's my duty in life. No, that's not your duty in life. That's just an, uh, that's just uh, a way of earning money, but that's not your real duty. Your real duty is, regardless of what way you earn your money, is to follow the rules and regulations of spiritual life and gradually develop love of Krishna. That's what your duty is. All these other things are not your real duty. They're just ways of making a living. Uh, one time, uh, this one person came to our temple in Paris, and whenever a new person would, uh, came to the temple, uh, whether here or in Paris, uh, I always asked them a few questions. So I said, that, uh, what do you do for a living? He said, I'm a thief. I said, really? I said, do you have any specialty? Yeah, he said, I, I specialize in videos. And not videos, he said, uh, at that time there were no videos. Uh, he said, uh, I specialize in, uh, you know, record players and things like that. You know. I said, really, how's business going? He says, it's going really good. <laughs> so, I mean, he was, he was like really honest, right? He said, I'm a thief. He said, that's why I make my living. I said, okay. I said, you're going to steal from us? He said, no, no, I, I'm not going to steal from you guys. I said, you sure? So, well, maybe if I see something I like. <laughs> He was being completely honest. See? So, but that's not you, that's not your real occupation. Uh, dharma means your occupational duty toward God, to, toward Krishna, and that is to engage in a service under the instruction of pure devotees. So, therefore, it says, such miseries can be removed only by the mercy of the Lord who sends his bona fide representatives to enlighten human beings and thus save them from all calamities. So, when you send your kids to school and they learn that, that uh, we all come from monkeys and when you die, there's nothing. You don't have to worry. There's not going to be any judgment. There's no spiritual world. All that is just, you know, religious gobbledygook. If you want to believe in that to feel good, that's okay. You're, you're free to believe in that, but it, it's not scientific. Yeah. As if coming from monkeys is scientific. Right? Have you ever seen anyone born of a monkey? Any human being born of a monkey? No. It doesn't exist. No, no history of it in human society. So we are, uh, so the so called scientists they are actually presenting fantasies. It's a Disneyland. It's called Disneyland Science. Mickey Mouse, Donald Duck, and Big Bang, and we come from monkeys, you see. It's not really science. It's all speculation, not based on any scientific proof. They claim they have scientific proof. Yeah, they claim, oh, well, we have scientific proof. You know, there's the... Uh, there's the bone in the back of a human being that uh, was originally a tail. Uh, are you crazy or what? How do you know it was originally a tail? What's your proof? Well, it looks something like the bone in a monkey that has a tail. It looks something like the bone, okay. But that's not proof that it was a tail, right? So you see, we're dealing with nonsense. But because they use big language, they use words that you don't understand, you say, well, they must know what they're talking about. I didn't understand one of the words, any of the words. You know, they use all these technical terms, right? So that's a trick. So you control people with language. You don't, you don't have to, it's, you don't even have need ideas. You just need language, you know, words that they don't understand, and you control them. So here Prabhupada is giving the truth. He says, such miseries can be removed only by the mercy of the Lord who sends his bona fide representatives to enlighten human beings and thus save them from all calamities, all problems of life. Hare Krishna, Sila Prabhupada, Ekija. Are there any questions? One point about animals.
They're able to understand things through their body. Yes. But that's not true. This, this is an example of it. You, Maharaj, used to say, my left, the left side of my body, my thighs and arms and eyes are all quivering again and again. I am having heart palpitations due to fear. All this indicates undesirable happenings. There you are. When, when these things happen, you know, someone says, oh, I better get an Advil. You know, they don't think, oh, something bad is going to happen. They say, I'll, I'll get an Advil and stop it artificially. You know, and all of a sudden, the next day, there's an earthquake, and their, their house falls on them, and they die. Whereas uh, Advil was not the, the response to that. The response to that quivering in, in the left side of the body should have been, I'm getting the hell out of here as fast as I can to get away from this earthquake. That's what the animals do. The animals leave the house, leave the barn. They go out somewhere where there's no trees, <laughs> so nothing can fall on them. Even though that's not the final, you know, even that is dangerous, but it's less dangerous than living in a barn or a house when there's a big earthquake, right? So your question is answered. Yes, there are. See, if you read Bhagavatam, you'll have all knowledge. You have all, you'll be able to read or you'll be able to understand what's going to happen through your body. Yeah. As a matter of fact, um, in, I remember my childhood, even in, in the tradition, the old tradition in Africa, when sometimes there's a sage, the old of the class in the family, he says, don't do this today because my eyes are heavy or my left side. And then the, 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 the things happen after that. Yeah. The news of somebody died somewhere. Yeah. I have a I had a I have a friend of mine who was a geographical astrologer. You know what that is? A geographical astrologer is a person who can tell you where you really should live to be most successful in life. So, and man, his man was an astrologer, right? He's telling other people, "Oh, this is going to happen and you shouldn't be here." And uh, so uh, so I was talking to him one day, and he said, oh, by the way, tomorrow is Thursday. He said, it's very bad for me, so uh, you won't be able to get in touch with me. I said, really? He said, I'm going to go somewhere where no one can, can communicate with me. I said, okay. So the next day, you know, it was a Thursday, and uh, I get a phone call from him. I said, uh, where are you? He said, well, I'm hiding out in the Redmond Senior Center. I said, really? <laughs> he said, yeah, I'm in one of the classrooms where there's nobody, and I'm pretty sure this is the safest place for me. I said, oh, okay. And then all of a sudden I hear this yelling, right? And, uh, and then he said, oh, wait a minute, I gotta, I gotta hang up, there's something's going wrong here. <laughs> Hangs up. <laughs> so, the next time I see him, I said, what happened that day? He said, uh, I ended up in jail. <laughs> Some lady came in and started screaming at me and called the police, said I had no right to be there. <laughs> <laughs> and he's a geographical astrologer, right? And he knew something was going to go wrong, and he, he picked a place where he thought he was going to be the safest. <laughs> That's a true story. You see, so you know it's, the whole thing is nonsense, right? Uh, I mean, yeah, the astrology can be, uh, let's say, valid for people who are under the spell of the three modes of material nature. But if you're a, a transcendentalist engaged in pure devotional service, you don't have to worry about you know astrology, palmistry, these things or that things. But yet. You can, from the Bhagavatam, learn how to read uh, signs that are in your body. You can do that. And it gives you a, a general idea of what's going to happen. Haribo. So thank you very much. We'll stop right there. All glories to Srila Prabhupada.